the downtown boxing gym. If you hear the name, you might think they're just a gym, but they are so much more than that. Books before boxing is their motto. And that says it all. What Kali and Sweeney, Kali Sweeney and Jessica Hauser have built in Detroit is so much more than boxing. It's about putting education first, providing support and prioritizing the next generation, creating a safe space, leading a purpose-driven life, building community. And when all of that is put to the test in a global pandemic, how do you find ways to overcome? Because sometimes we know you have to take three steps back in order to go five steps forward. And after all, what is boxing all about if not getting back up once you've been knocked down? Good morning, I'm Leo McGowan Hare and welcome to another one of our live weekly conversations as part of our Leading Through Change series. A chance for you to hear from leaders across the world on how they are navigating these challenging times. Now, I wanna preview the next hour. Sam Allen, the Chief Operating Officer of Salesforce.org, will be speaking with Kali Sweeney and Jessica Hauser, who run the Downtown Boxing Gym in Detroit. Now, prepare yourself. If you haven't heard this gym story, you are going to be so inspired and you don't wanna miss it. See, since 2007, this gym has been teaching kids in Detroit's toughest neighborhoods valuable life lessons from the classroom to the boxing ring. Now, after that, Jessica will share how the downtown boxing gym uses Salesforce's V2 Mom framework to create their vision, values, methods, obstacles, and measurements to drive alignment in their organization and how her board members leverage analytics to track and engage donors all within Community Cloud. And since today is all about Detroit, we will conclude with a special appearance by Mayor Hawthorne. And as we do every week on this show, we're always looking for ways to help others. So if you hear, no, when you hear the story of the downtown boxing gym, you're gonna to wanna to support. So we wanna give you that opportunity. You can go to give.classy.org slash DBG to donate. Again, that link is give.classy.org slash DBG. Now, before I hand it over to Sam for a conversation with Kali and Jessica, let's take a look at what the downtown boxing gym is all about in this film. Unleashing the superhero inside of you. Man, I love that line. I'm going to use that for my kids. And that's what the downtown boxing gym does. So now it's my pleasure to introduce the chief operating officer of salesforce.org, Sam Allen, to lead us in a conversation with these amazing leaders of the downtown boxing gym. Morning, Sam. Good morning, Leah. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, I got to say the toughest job at Salesforce is following you in anything. Your energy is just amazing. Um, so hello, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, as you saw in that short film, the downtown Boston Gym Detroit is really one of a kind. Um, it's a very special organization that stems from the vision of two just absolutely amazing leaders, Callie Sweeney and Jessica Hauser. I first met uh, DBG a couple of years ago when I was in Detroit doing some doing some pro bono business consulting, and I was instantly blown away by um, the long term success of the org, which we'll talk about in a moment. And more importantly, I was absolutely inspired by Callie's steadfast devotion to his core values. 
So Callie and Jessica, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we last spoke in Las Vegas back in January at the Consumer Electronics Show, and my Lord, has the world changed since then. So uh, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. So let's just dive right in. Um, Callie, it would be great for you to take a couple of minutes and just uh, walk us through your personal journey and what led you to starting uh, the gym. Um, what led me to starting the gym was the fact that I've seen a lot of the same stuff and situations that I went through. I've seen it still existing in our community. There was still no uh, resources in our community. There was nobody there stepping up to actually lead these young men and women in the right direction. Myself, personally, I went to Detroit Public Schools and I never learned how to read and write. I mean, bottom line, I never learned to read and write in school. Um, from about the third grade, I realized that I had a problem. And instead of somebody telling me, you know, let's see if we can fix this problem, they just told me I was like, uh, I was destined for prison or, or, or early grave. And they created a narrative for me and I kind of believed it. So I lived my life as if I was gonna be dead or in jail before I was 21. And uh, at some point in time, I just gave up on school. It was like in my 12th grade year, I believe. And I had like a, a report card with all good grades. And I was like, impossible. I can't even read. I don't even know who the, I don't even know the teachers. Cause I was so embarrassed. I wouldn't even go to the classroom. It got that bad. And so, um, I got the, the report card and I said, man, you know what? I'm just gonna try and do something else. I got out here and just started roaming the streets, ended up in a gang culture, uh, joined the gang and became, since I had nothing to live for, I didn't care about living or dying. I just kept going with it. And I watched a lot of my friends die early uh, death and, and go to prison. And one day uh, my brother, he pulled me to the side and he said, man, listen, you do know the rest of the world don't live like this, right? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, no resources, death and destruction all around him know anything to live for. And I was like, mm, no, this is all I know. This is all. He said, the world is bigger than your four blocks. And he showed me a picture. He said, this is all your friends. And he pointed at him. He's just like, he's dead, he's dead. He's in jail, he's in jail, he's dead. Don't be the next guy on this picture. And so I had a chance to really sit down and think about what it is that I really wanna do with my life. The only thing that kept coming back to me is, I bet your life would be a lot easier if I, had, if I knew how to read. And so I made it my mission to learn how to read. I went back to school and I sat through some of the most embarrassing classes that I can ever go through. You know, I could because I couldn't really keep up. And the guy saw the potential in me. He said, stick with it, go to another classroom. And then they slowed it down for me. And, and from that point, I never looked back. I got a job. I changed my life. And one day I was at my job. and was like, OK, I've made it to where I want to be. But I, there's countless other people who haven't made people who haven't made it to where they want to be. There's just so many kids out there that I see them going through the same things, deflecting and doing all the, the bad behavior that I used to do. So I was like, you know, this job is cool, but I quit. I quit the job. I found a place and I said, how can I get to these kids? I noticed that they like when I was teaching my son how to box. So I said, that's going to be the key to get the kids attention. In an hour play, you can find out more about a person in an hour play than you can a lifetime of questioning. So what I did was I said, let's, let's see what this hour play looked like. So we did the boxing. And more and more kids would just join in and join in. And more parents would bring their kids to me. And I would have conversations when I'm asking them how your grades are. You know, you know, what do you plan on doing with your life? What do you see yourself in the next five years? And so we, we developed a bond and people started trusting me. They started bringing more and more kids. And so I found a spot and I rented the spot out and you know, had some hard times. I ended up homeless. I ended up losing everything to try to keep the place going. Once I had overhead, it wasn't like we were doing it in the park. Once I had overhead, it, it became real hard. And from there, I lost everything. I kept everything into the building. And Jessica came along at the end of it, right when we we're at the edge of the cliff. And she came in and she made it into a nonprofit. And we, we, we've been going since then, 100% graduation rate. That's yeah, that, that, that's an amazing story. And I'll be honest with you, one of the things that blew me away when we first met was the fact that you're, you're, since 2007, 100% of your kids are graduating from high school. And it's not just that they're graduating because they're getting pushed through the system. You know, and having having uh, good grades, even though they can't read or write, like your program ensures that these kids are getting the education they deserve. Um, Jessica, uh, good segue. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about how you met the gym and got involved? Yeah, um, it was a total fluke. I had no idea that there was this incredible program being run. I just wanted to. I like. I don't box. Don't ever hit me. But I like to do the workout, and so a friend of mine said, "Why don't you go? I you know know this gym. Why don't you go down there and train the you know the." the um, owner of the gym could use a few extra bucks. 
So I went down there and walked through the doors. And um, at the time I was in graduate school studying international children's rights on the political side of the house. And so I'd seen a lot of after school programs. I walked through the doors thinking I was just going to a boxing gym and was just instantly struck by the passion. Um, you know, kids of, you know, eight to 18, all genuinely interacting with each other, laughing and joking. You could just feel it. And I was like, who is this? You know, who is Kali? What is happening? And, you know, when the mission, I'm not the mission. So when the kids are there, it's not going to stop and talk to me. So I just followed him around for two or three hours. Who are you? What is this place? What is happening? You know, and I saw adults genuinely interacting with kids to so go do your homework and a kid would go do their homework, you know, stuff that I just, you don't see that often. And at the end of um, that experience, I didn't actually work out. Kali said, you know, well, I'm glad that you're interested in what's happening, but I just got done telling the parents that I have to close. He was going to close, work three jobs, save up a bunch of money with the hope of reopening. And I'm like, hey, I don't know how to do this, but this place cannot close. It cannot close. And so I asked if I could get involved. And I still have no idea how we trusted a random stranger off the street with his you know, his heart and soul, but um, I have never left. And so I just jumped in and started trying to build out, you know, as much of a solid foundation around the the passion and the mission as possible over the last 10, almost 11 years. Well, I could be honest with you, I get to know you a little bit. You are definitely an authentic person and easy to trust. So I can see how Kelly did that. <laughs> um, you know, I've, the times I've been in the gym, I'm also blown away by the love and the community. It, it is It is quite, quite amazing. So, Callie, maybe take a minute and talk about how what the message is to these kids. So I know some of these kids are probably like, I don't need you. I don't need this. You know, they were like you. I, I'm going to figure this out on my own. What is your message to the kids and more importantly, to what family they have about why it's important to come to the gym? Um, the message is just simple and plain. You know, um, we try to get them access to the resources that they might not necessarily have. And we, when I tell them, I tell them my life experience. I give them my testimony. I tell them, like, you know from my point of view, what happened to me, not being able to read and write, not being able to read a menu and ordering the wrong thing off the menu, knowing that you don't even like it, but you just can't read it. And I, and I told him like, you know, it's better, you know that you have a problem before anybody else knows that you have a problem. So now the next step is to, you know, don't follow somebody else's narrative, create your own path and, 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 and take, make positive choices. Cause I made a lot of wrong choices and I just give them my testimony. I don't, I don't hold anything back. I tell them the truth. And I made a lot of mistakes and I watched a lot of my friends make the mistakes and to use the resources that they have now and use those young legs and don't try to use them once you're 40 years old because you can't catch up then once you're 40 years old. It's, it's real hard. So I try to tell them to do it right now and make the plans for the future. And that, that's just future planning is like the most important thing. And education is the key to mostly everything that you want in this life. Education is the most important thing to me. And I tell it to the kids all the time. And I'll, just to jump in on that, one of, my favorite messages that he gives to all of the staff is, you know, he says, I don't see bad kids. I just, you know, so we don't see bad kids. We just see kids that haven't been hurt yet. That, yep. I think the essence of that um, is super powerful. Yeah. Cause a lot of, a lot of times it's just, you know, people deflect, you know, in those situations and a lot of kids were doing the same thing. And I, I can see it a mile away when you're deflecting, when you have a problem and you just ask the kid, you know, like what's, what's the real core problem? What's the problem at the end of the day? What, what's really causing all of this. And we just have conversations. So we just have, oh, have open dialogue with the, with the young men and women. That's, that's awesome. Um, so Jessica, t talk to us a little bit about how much the gym has changed in the last 13 years um, and the, the, the change you've gone through. And because it is really impressive when you go there, the facility and the program and the parents and the drivers and everybody else. Um, but I know it didn't start that way. So maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I'll say the thing I'm most proud of is the core and the heartbeat of the mission has not changed. Um, what has changed is the access to resources. What has changed is that we don't have a building with a roof that pours water every time it rains outside. So, um, you know, yes, when when Kali first started, the building was in a 4,000 square foot tiny old car wash that um, did not even have enough space for the, the 65 kids that were in it. We knew we needed to have um, a new building. We knew we needed a way to get kids to and from the program. Unfortunately, our public transportation is not where it should be in the city. So if parents don't have a vehicle, there's really no other safe way for kids to get to and from a program. We knew we needed food, kids were starving, um, and we needed a really solid 
paid academic staff that could support our kids. And so over the last 13 years, we have been chipping away at every one of those things. About five years ago, we moved into a 27,000 square foot building. Um, we have just over 150 kids in the program now. We still have over 1,300 kids on our waiting list. Um, Pre-COVID, our goal was to get to 250 kids by the end of 2020. We now have seven vans. We pick up and drop off our kids from school and home. We have you know, dinner every night or breakfast, lunch, and dinner when kids are with us full days. We have um, a full-time academic staff of six, and then we have additional part-time staff that are all paid. Same with some paid um, mentors and coaches, which is incredible. And you know, really the, the goal is for us to be able to replicate that successful model that very well-funded school districts have, right? So it's the social capital that kids are exposed to, the enrichment opportunities that kids are exposed to over and over, not just one off. But um, and so that's the beauty. Our kids are with us five days a week, all year round for years. So we have that opportunity to really find those light bulb moments and grow on and build on them. Um, but a lot more to do. But we uh, the resources that we've been able to put in place thus far, I think, is pretty spectacular. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, you mentioned one thing that I want to I want to touch on when I was there. You mentioned the number of kids that are on the wait list. And I remember looking around the facility and thinking, man, you've got a lot more capacity here. And then Callie, remember you walked in the room and I said, hey, why, why, aren't, why don't you have more kids? Like, why not go from 150 to 200 to 250? And your response really hit me pretty hard. And you said, I absolutely refuse to compromise. Uh, if, I, if my graduation rate drops from 100% to 99%, that's a failure. And that kind of blew me away because as a business person, I'm thinking, well, 99% is great. But with you, 1% means that's one or two or three kids that aren't making it through. And you just refuse to compromise that. Um, I think it's an amazing adherence to a value. Talk about that a little bit more and expand on why that's so important to you. Um, I mean, I, I would hate for a kid to come to our program and not get the full experience of the program because of overcrowding and they start slipping through the cracks. I mean, we want to scale, but we want to do it the right way. We don't want to have a kid get lost in the shuffle. And, um, you know, I, I can't stand to see any kid end up in a bad situation. That's just not something that I'm willing to, to live with. You know, I just want to try and reach every kid and do it the way that we've been doing it for the past, what, going on 13 years. 13 years. I don't want a kid to miss that opportunity just because we're trying to grow so fast. I want to do it the right way. And that's just yeah. super important. It's just super important to me because to be totally honest, I mean, the, the county morgue is right around the corner from the gym. It's not too far from there. And that place stays open all day long. The county jail stays open all day long. The county jail is on the other end of it, which is south, and the, the county morgue is on the north, going to the north of the, of the gym. And those places stay open 24 hours, and, and they're constantly packing people in there. You know, a kid that can't read or write, he's going to end up in a bad situation. So I want every kid to have the full experience of being in the gym, have that support, get those resources that they might not necessarily come by. It might just be something that's just having somebody take that one-on-one -on -one time with them, and I just don't want to see that happen it's it's uh it's an amazing um that here's the value i just i can't uh compliment you enough on that um hey so jessica talk maybe for a moment about the impact uh that you have in the community just above and beyond the kids and, and just as an example one thing that i noted that was amazing was you have the moms who sit at the front desk and check everybody coming in and those are people you want to mess with by the way uh, you ain't supposed to be there. You're not going to be there. But maybe talk a little bit, too, about this overall impact in the community that the gym is having. Yeah, I mean, a message that Kali is always in our ear about is that um, it, we have to be expansive, right? So it's not just about the students. It's about their families. It's about the larger community, our neighbors. I um, mean, always that we need to always be thinking about every decision we make. How does that impact the larger community? So um, yeah, specifically for job openings, whenever we have openings in any position, we send the, the job posting out to our family group first and see if there's interest, um, you know, with the families or with their friends or family. And if, if there is, then we go through that interview process first. If there's not, then we post it in a larger, uh, you know, in a larger way. And so we do have, my gosh, I think about eight of our parents right now are currently employees. Um, we also hire some of our high school students as interns so that they're able to start making some money and have take on a larger responsibility. We have a parent, our own version of a parent booster group so that there is that voice of our families in the mix at all times. 
for the COVID reopening, for everything we've done COVID related, our parent, we've had parental representation um, every step of the way to make sure that we're aligned. You know, we don't view ourselves in a silo and our families in a separate silo. We are, we are a big family and we treat everything as such. Yeah, it's one amazing community. And one, you know, one comment when I'm there, I love seeing the the um, alumni that come back and just spend time with the kids on their own. Like these college age kids and twenty young twenties that come in is is, is awesome. Uh, you mentioned COVID nineteen. Obviously, there's a lot of conversation right now everywhere about going back to school. My kids are going back to school. We're trying to figure that out. That's doubly, triply um, harder for an organization like yours. Uh, how, how has that been going for you? What 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 have you been doing to um, get the facility ready for that? Um, we put all the proper markings down to make sure everybody stays six feet apart. Uh, we put dividers up across the tables. Um, we put up all kinds of uh, sanitation stations everywhere. Uh, we keep the kids in, in cohorts of five just in case of any, anything happened. We can easily trace it back to where it started and everybody's not exposed to it because of, because of the number of kids that we have. Um, we don't intermix the kids. We offset the days that they come into the facility. We've um, doubled our cleaning. Instead of just cleaning once a day, we clean almost hourly. We have checks. Um, we have the, the, the screening process before you get in the van. We have a screening process before you come in the building. And if you leave out the building, you have to be screened again. Or, you know, and just we try to offset the days. We're just trying to keep everything as clean as possible. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that a little bit. Um, uh, we, As I said, you know, we've been staying really close with our parents. And so one big need from our parents was to have a safe space for kids to come during the day. So typically during the summertime, we would be open full days. Kids would be with us from 10 in the morning till seven at night. And, um, you know, so we had gone hundred percent virtual when we were mandated to do so, but as soon as we could safely reopen, we did. Um, and we will, um, looking ahead into the fall, remain open full days based on the needs of the parents, as long as we safely can do that. Also super proud. We had some really great creative folks help us with signage and um, some, you know, reopening documents that were very kid friendly. Um, and I'll tell you what, that has worked remarkably because there's buy in. It's not punitive. There's buy in from all levels that this is just something we have to do and deal with as a community. And we will get through it as safe as possible. But um, you know, but it's important that kids have a safe space to go with parental supervision because most of our parents have to go back to work in person. They don't have the luxury of being able to work virtually. Yeah. Um, wonderful job with all of that. Uh, so Callie, what's next for DBG? What, what are you thinking about for this next coming year and, and a little bit after that? Um, mostly just getting back open. Just getting the, getting the gym back open, having four days to make sure the kids don't have any slippage. You know, they 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 come so far. We've got them up to grade or two grades above. You know, from where they were at, or just bought them bought them up to speed. We don't want the kids to to slide back. That's the worst thing in the world. So I'm just looking forward to getting the gym back up and running in in full force. You know, taking care of the kids through the full day. And uh, as far as in the future, we still plan on uh, scaling. We we still plan on, but we want to be able to do it the right way. So. That's what I'm looking forward to in the future. Uh, maybe come to your town to help you guys out. Yeah, we would love to. Uh, you know, I, I think if we could rubber stamp uh, and mirror that organization in every major city, it would be an amazing success. And I, I still personally believe that's a mission we should think about long, long term because um, it's so, so important. Uh, maybe the last question, Jessica, how, how are you thinking about the future and, and what's next for DBG? Yeah, I mean, exactly the same, right? It's um, ramping back up for the what we provide for the students in the fall. So we do a ton of academic intervention for the summer that will continue, but fall there's additional layers of relationships with the schools and you know having that dialogue to make sure kids are fully supported. So it's, you know, right now a big hurdle is like getting all of our plans in place and functioning in a way that is fully supporting our families who are almost all going to be virtual come fall um, and supporting the teachers of our students to make sure that um, you know, we're playing our part. And then as soon as we safely can get back to adding more students into the program um, and looking ahead down the road again, we're all in. Coming Wonderful. to a city near you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and look, I, I, I'm looking forward to uh, helping on that journey. 
Um, so listen, I appreciate that dialogue. What I'd love to do now is bring my amazing colleague, Leah, back into the picture. I think she's going to run some Q&A from the audience. Yeah, we have a few questions. But if you don't mind, Sam, before we go to the Q&A, can I just say, Kali, I want to thank first your brother for helping you have a bigger vision for yourself because that therefore impacted you and how you're impacting the kids. So one, thank you for sharing your story. I think oftentimes people don't realize how empowering their own story is. They feel like in order for me to give back or have impact, I gotta have all these things. And there's so much power in just your story. And the fact that you just shared that, you opened this show with that, was so moving to me and seeing how you are taking that to empower others to give back. And that that is the cycle of the world that I believe in. Like it, it, we all have a story to share that inspires other people to shine their light. And that's what your brother did. That's what you're doing. That's what you are doing, Jessica. So I'm just super inspired by your story. I'm like, I need to do more. I already told Jessica, I'm coming to the gym and we're going to run a whole trailhead class. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do that. So you thank you. Um, yes, we do have questions. So from Jill on the live stream says for downtown boxing gym, your gym does amazing work for kids, education and health. How do you do you have programs in place like workforce development programs for the parents to help educate them as well? Because we know sometimes when you just change the child and not the parents, there can be struggles. But when you lift the whole family it's the, the impact it has longevity. Yeah. So, um, our approach is, a, is, uh, not as direct with the parents and that is on purpose. And that was something that, um, I was able to really witness with Kali with a lot of our parents is that, um, hit from his experience is that, you know, if you like come at somebody often, especially once they're already older and feel like, you know, this is my path and this is what I'm doing. Sometimes you can have get some resistance. And so instead of that, it's, you know, bringing people into the fold, having parents be coaches so that, you know, they're infused then with the values of the organization and they feel safe and then can open up and have dialogue. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then you can explore opportunities to support them from that place. And we've seen great success. We've had parents go back to go back to school and get their D GED and then go to college with their, you know, with their child that graduated from our program. Um, we've connected parents to other job opportunities. So we we do it, but in a in a more natural, informal, in, informal way. Great, great. That that's really impressive. And I heard that you're talking about how you haven't uh, hired some of the parents there as well at the yeah. front desk because there's nothing stronger than a mama stopping people from coming in. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> protecting our kids. You know, I'm a mama bear. I know how that is. All right, from Doug on the live stream, uh, also for Downtown Boxing Gym. As kids are going back to school, how do you plan on providing support? for distant learning? Because you said that you're going to be open uh, all day now during the school year. So is that going to be in support of the distance learning too? Yep. That is why we're going to be open full days. So our um, we have a schedule set up that's going to be aligned with the various students' schedules. And so, you know, the time they have synchronous learning, they'll be on, you know, our Wi-Fi leveraging technology that we've provided for the student to be able to be part of their classroom. And then we'll have our teaching staff, um, you know, there's blocks of time where they'll do help them with their homework, help continue the intervention that we're providing. Um, and then there'll also be some, you know, enrichment added into that and um, physical fitness added into that and then and meals as well. So they'll be there full day, just like a school day with a little DBG spin on it. <laughs> I love that the the learning happens there because also in the gym, I, one of my biggest concerns with distance learning and I have to also infuse in my, my children's schedule is physical activity because you can literally find yourself sitting all day. So right there at the gym, that's so perfect. Um, this next question is for you, Sam, from Chelsea. As so many schools are defaulting to distance learning, how is Salesforce.org helping to support schools and students, especially in underserved communities, to have access to technology to be able to continue learning? 
Uh, that's a great question. Thanks for that. So uh, a couple of things. Um, one, we just did a $20 million grant um, to uh, several public school systems in, in the U.S., uh, New York, Oakland Unified, San Francisco, and some others um, to help drive uh, better access to technology. We're also leveraging uh, the work.com, going back to work um, solutions that we've created for businesses. We're just turning those around and making them ready for educational uh, systems. And we are um, delivering those services to, um, you know, not only K through 12, but also higher ed institutions uh, at either for free or a very, very steep discount because, you know, we're all parents too. Uh, we all believe in the educational system. And so it's a huge push for Salesforce in general, um, salesforce.org is to help our communities get back to school um, and have a full suite of products that can help schools manage these things. As you know, the, you know, the, and especially in the U.S., this thing is impacting communities differently. And there are some schools where kids are going back to school physically. My kids aren't going back. I'm in California. They're virtual. Um, so different school systems see different um, capabilities and we're providing that. Yes, great. And I have a question for a downtown boxing gym. You all are so much more than boxing, but do you have just a, a membership program where people just want to come join to to work out and get fit? No, no. You're like you got. We're more than that. You got to come be part <laughs> no, of the whole community. No, no. It's it's strictly it's strictly for the it's strictly for the youth. Uh, we want to get them young before they before they make any poor choices in life. We want to give them much education. I mean, much information, positive inf information that's possible at a young age, get them access to, to technology, give them, you know, we don't have time to do a fitness class right now. We're trying to get these kids ready for the world. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I loved how Jessica opened up the story that she just came there and started following you around, Kali, yeah. and she just never left. So she still, she still follow you around and she's determined to, yeah. I love that. Everybody needs a Jessica in their life. I'm just saying, <laughs> what a gift. What a gift. Well, thank you. That's what we have for Q&A, Sam. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and just sharing your story. I, I do have a question. What is one of the most memorable stories out of the downtown boxing gym that you can think of, Kali, and then you, Jessica? Most memorable? Could be one of your students, could be a parent, could be somebody in your community. I mean, every, every time I come in there, it's, there's a memorable moment almost every day. You know, you know, you got kids who, who the system had given up on and now those kids are honor students, you know, and kids who they say would never make it through school and those kids graduate from school or if a kid just learn how to do math. Every, those days, I, I, I remember those days and I hold them dear to my heart because those are the things that I did, you know, learning how to read or learning how to do math and stuff like that. And those things, they really change your life. And when I see kids do that, or they get something or it clicks or, or a young man or, or, or a young lady comes back and they spread that knowledge to the next generation. You know, all those days are memorable to me. So I love it. I'm loving every minute of it. Awesome. What about you, Jessica? Yeah. I mean, I second everything Kali just said. I really can't say much different. I'll, I'll say for myself personally, um, really the most memorable thing is just how much I've learned about, you know, that it's not the child that is, that is, that has the problem that it's, you know, as adults, we are failing kids all over this country. And it's up to us to really step up and step in and, and make it right. And I will say that has been, um, the greatest gift that I've, you know, is just to have my eyes open to what is really going on and being able to make some impact on that. Yeah, and I love that when you said earlier about um, that children are not bad, right? We don't wanna label children that because then that's what they will live up to, right? Oh, I'm bad, so I'm just gonna be bad. That's what you said I am. So the behaviors that they might be doing are not in the best, are gonna serve them well or their community well, but you want to definitely distance the behavior from the person and give them space to create who they are and let them be the greatness that's within them and not these labels that are put on us regularly. So I think it's so very important that when you lead and you're leading an organization from that perspective, that is the impact, right? And that is your mission and driving that we, these are untapped potentials. These are, you know, unshine diamonds. These are great geniuses that need a space where they can 
have be able to create and find themselves. So I loved that you said that earlier, because I think that's so important. That's a narrative we have to change. Even as parents, when you, you know, when you're upset with your kid, you, you have to be mindful of the language you use because they, they absorb it and take it all on. Hey, yeah. Leah, let me, can I add um, just my own personal story, uh, my, my favorite memory? And then one more, just one more comment back to the question about what Salesforce is doing. I was remiss. If you can go to salesforce.com's blog or salesforce.org's blog and see all about our announcements and what we're doing for education. Uh, so when I was in VBG the first time, you know, we were doing a lot of this pro bono consulting. And, you know, we felt pretty good about ourselves. We sat down and tackled a lot of the problems that Jessica and Callie laid out for us. And I remember Callie, you know, smile a little bit. He comes in the room. And he's like, hey, what y'all come up with? And we talked to him about it. And he says, you guys are pretty satisfied, huh? We're like, yeah. And he says, uh, you know, you're going to go home to your hotel tonight. It's probably a four-star hotel. You're going to have a steak and you're going to get on your plane and fly back to San Francisco. And you know what? You're just one more adult who's abandoned these kids. And that was very powerful to me. And it changed me and how I think about my place in the world and what I need to do to help. And so, you know, the, the mission you guys have is so beyond tremendous and everything you're doing is amazing. And, you know, whatever I can do to continue to help you in your mission, you know, you can count on me. Thanks a Thank lot. You. We appreciate it. Completely agree. Thank you. Thank you both, um, Kali and Jessica. And it was so great to hear from you both. And like I said, I'm just leaving. Whenever I hear these different stories, I leave inspired figuring out what more can I do? What more can I do? Am I fully using my platform? Am I fully utilizing my resources to make an impact? So I thank you for, for inspiring myself. Uh, but we're not done with you, Jessica. I'm excited to learn more about how you and Downtown Boxing Gym are leveraging Community Cloud. The floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Leah. Um, yeah, so I think you guys have all figured out we are a growing organization um, with an, you know, lots of needs and lots of demand on everyone's time. We have an incredible board of directors who are also very busy, and we were trying to figure out a way to get them clear, concise, transparent information um, that would be right at their fingertips whenever they, whenever they needed it. And thankfully, several of our board members actually use Salesforce and love it. And they came to us with a proposal because um, we had been implementing Salesforce on the fundraising side. They came to us with a proposal of implementing the community cloud. And, um, and so we dug into it a little bit and were totally blown away that one tool could really solve and answer so many of the pain points that we were facing and that the board was facing. Um, and so we like jumped in and have loved it and are still like totally shocked at how amazing it is. So I'm gonna walk you through the power of the tool as if I'm Rakesh, our board chair, and show you how the community puts everything in one place, which really allows him and the rest of the board to align vision and fundraising, subcommittee collaboration and track his own tasks. So um, we lead with our mission and heart and want to reinforce that message every time our board members log in. Here you can see our vision and values that carry through everything we do. As I mentioned, time with our board members is rare and valuable. So the community really supports collaboration through groups and chatter posts. The homepage provides a bird's eye view of what's happening. It's a single place for a quick check-in where board members can post comments, see what records have been changed, provide feedback, or just simply stay in touch with one another. Another Salesforce tool we have implemented is the V2Mom. As mentioned earlier, V2Mom stands for vision, values, methods, obstacles, and measures. Annually, the organization goes into a strategy session where we create our V2Mom and our board does the same. What comes out of the annual board strategy sessions are board goals. Here you can see Rakesh's V2Mom that the larger board will align with. The beauty of this tool is there is total transparency. We can see what Rakesh is prioritizing and where he is at in the process. We are also able to see how his V2Mom maps the organizational V2Mom. This tool increases accountability and helps us measure what matters. There are quick visuals to understand what's happened over various quarters and to see if things are on track by looking at the percentage complete or status. Rakesh can easily go in and update goal progress as circumstances change. For example, Rakesh has to hit pause on events because of COVID-19, so he is changing the status from on track to behind schedule. 
Our mission is ambitious. To serve on our board, each board member commits to helping the organization fundraise by giving directly, which we call the give amount, and they also commit to helping get funds, which we call a get amount. The board also commits to tackle a percentage of our annual fundraising goal. It's quite hard to know if you're making a dent on your goals if there's not one space to easily find that information. As a result, we created a dashboard where the board can take one quick look and see where they're at target versus actual. You can see the overall goal percentage, give percentage, and get percentage. This speaks to the request for simple, transparent, and clear information. Groups are one of our absolute most favorite community features because all the information is in one place and right at Rakesh's fingertips. And it gives DBG staff one space to communicate information to the board members. For some context, each board member serves on a subcommittee. Here, Rakesh is clicking into his community engagement subcommittee. Several things to mention. Having a space where they can discuss confidential information was critically important. Each group is private, so the information shared in this space is not visible in other chatter feeds. They can choose how often a summary of group activities are emailed to them so they can use their inbox to stay informed. We can keep private discussions in a group so that all members can see the full thread and participate, not just the ones that happen to be CC. One of my most favorite benefits of this section is that it truly saves our staff time. Before we had groups, our discussions were scattered in emails or text messages, and there was not an easy way to get new board or committee members up to speed. New board members and DBG staff are now able to bookmark important information and upload important files. When onboarding new members, we are able to direct them to the group and they can easily get up to speed on their own. This saves our staff about one work day for each new board member, which is huge for us. Out of each board meeting or subcommittee meeting comes tasks. Previously, we would have just had to hope that our amazing, but again, very, very busy board members would remember the tasks that they committed to, which I must say didn't always happen. Now before a meeting ends, everyone logs in their tasks and has a simple way to track progress. This allows for accountability and transparency. It also gives DBG staff the tool to support board members fully. If we see a task that is stuck at any stage other than complete, we're able to harass them a little uh, and reach out and see what's needed to move that task along. You know, DBG really is a family and we truly feel that the communities gives all of us that ability to have each other's back, stay focused on what matters most um, and just, you know, communicate as efficiently as possible. So thank you so much for this opportunity for allowing me to share that experience with you. Thank you, Jessica, for that amazing demo. And thank you, Sam, for facilitating such an amazing conversation and inspirational conversation with Holly and Jessica. Thank you both. Now, before we go on to our next awesome guest, Major Mayor uh, Hawthorne, for a performance, those of you watching on Twitter, you're gonna need to switch over. So come on over now to Salesforce Live so you don't miss it. That link is salesforce.com slash live. Again, salesforce.com slash live. I'll see you there. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> 